G'day folks, my name's Shane. Today we're checking out the Philips BDM3201F 32-inch computer monitor. This particular monitor is an LED backlit display and it also features 1080p resolution. So it's not a 4K monitor, but it does go up to 1080p. This will make it perfect for the majority of consoles if you don't want to run them in 4K mode, obviously. And it will also work well with stuff like video cameras or any other HDMI input source. There's two main reasons I went for this particular monitor and two things I'm gonna be using it for on the most part. One's an extra display. So when I'm doing live streaming on YouTube on my main channel, I can essentially just view the comments on that screen and just have one easy to see monitor. My main wall is actually on the opposite side. So I'm usually shooting towards this way. Today it's reversed for the sake of the video. The other reason I wanted this particular monitor was it works great in 1080p mode with my Panasonic Lumix GH5. So I can essentially make sure I'm in focus when I'm shooting videos in this particular room. I'm not using it right now, so fingers crossed the focus is great. One of the small limitations of this particular screen is it only has one HDMI input, but it also offers you the VGA, which is the blue one, as well as the white connector as well, the DVI. So it also has those. If you're on an older computer, you can still hook them up to this. In terms of picture quality, I think it looks spectacular. I actually have a 4K monitor over there, which I've also done a review of. You can find that up in the cards if you wanna check that out. But in terms of visual quality, I think this looks fantastic. It's just turned itself off. The onboard speakers aren't anything to email home about. I think they sound pretty average like most of these type of monitors. They should just leave them out. I don't know anyone who really uses onboard speakers on their monitors unless you're using an iMac where they actually sound pretty good. These particular speakers don't sound good and I noticed as soon as I hooked up this actual screen to my computer, it defaulted to the sound coming out of this monitor. So I had to disable that as well. And when I'm also shooting with my GH5 hooked up via HDMI into this unit, I have to actually mute the speakers by using the jack that it comes with as well. I'll overlay all of this on screen so you can check it out. One way I got around using multiple HDMI sources was just to buy a $20 connector, which I actually previously owned, hook that up and it works fine. This is a really great way of just saving a few bucks instead of spending a hundred or so dollars more on buying a monitor that has more than one HDMI input source, you can get away with it just by using one of these cheap adapters. It doesn't matter where you are in the world, you should be able to find one of those. I'll post a link through to Amazon if you do live in the United States. If you live in Australia, you can get them on eBay as well. There's a couple of things worth pointing out as well. Thanks to the way that this sort of locks into place, you have no play on the monitor. You can't really move it left or right or anything like that. And you can't move it up or down. That's one sort of limitation in terms of its design. Some computer monitors you can sort of, you know, bring up and some you can move left or right a little bit. This one, you can't do that at all. But that said, it should be at about the right height on a desk if you're just sitting on a regular sized desk. I don't have any problems where it is right now. The build quality on this particular monitor is actually really, really good. We have a metal base, which is pretty rare on a lot of monitors. You'll find most of them are plastic and this particular one is metal. So that I actually really, really liked. In Australia, this is an absolute bargain for a 1080p monitor. I shopped around for about three weeks before I found this one and Officeworks had it on sale and I thought, you know what? This will be perfect for what I want. Having another 4K monitor in this room for what I was gonna use it for was a little bit of overkill. And the, like I said, the main objective is to essentially come out of a video camera, which this looks like a mirrorless DSLR, via HDMI, and I can hook it up straight into the monitor, which is awesome. So for that purpose alone, it works great. Check this out, this is about 45 degrees off from the center, so just so you can see what the viewing angle is from the side. So imagine drawing a line diagonally out from this particular corner. That's kind of where I'm looking at it right now. Honestly, there's not a whole lot of difference between this 1080p monitor and this Acer 4K monitor. Now you might be saying there's a huge difference. Well, visually when you're sitting in front of it, there's not that much of a difference. The 4K obviously gives you more real estate to work with and it's gonna be slightly sharper but there's something really pleasing about looking at this. I'm not sure, too sure what it is, but it just feels a little softer on the eyes maybe. And the colors are a little bit warmer. It's probably just something I can adjust on the settings of the Acer as well. But overall, I'm pretty impressed. 
So what are my overall thoughts about this particular monitor for the price that I actually paid for it? I'm not sponsored by any companies. I actually went out and bought this for myself. I'm really blown away by it. I actually have one other computer in the other room and I'm thinking to myself, I might grab another one of these while they're on sale. I think they look great. The 4K monitor does have that extra bit of sharpness and obviously more real estate to work with, but this is essentially the same size as the actual 4K monitor and it's about half the price and 1080p is still fine for most things. I still think the majority of people that are out there will be happy with a 1080p monitor unless you're into hardcore gaming and you're not the best of everything or unless you're editing and producing 4K or higher content. So you might be asking what's the millisecond response time and all of that kind of stuff. I'm not really sure. I had a look on the Philips website. I couldn't find anything unfortunately. So I'm only gonna assume that maybe it's not the fastest response time out there. Otherwise, it would say it proudly on the box. That's usually how it works. You might be asking what are some of the downsides to this particular screen? Like I mentioned earlier, only one HDMI port might be a downside to some people. It might not matter to others, but I thought I'd mention that. The onboard speakers are usually pretty bad in most computer monitors, and this is no exception. Another thing that I don't seem to really dig about this particular screen is the way you navigate the menus. There's a little joystick control on the back, which is under there, and it's really, really fiddly to get a, kind of get, it doesn't feel very intuitive is what I'm trying to say. They could have designed that a whole lot smarter. There should have been a button on there as well. Instead, you've got to sort of navigate through menus using this control back here, and then it's, it's just, it's pretty awkward. I wish they just had a simple on and off button on the actual monitor as well. The only way you can really turn this thing off is if you've got your computer turned off or your source is unplugged and it will go into sleep mode and then you can turn it off from there. But it's just, you can't just walk over and turn this thing off. There's no buttons anywhere along the panel to actually turn it off. And I think that kind of sucks because I don't want this on all the time. Like I said, I've got the HDMI switcher back there. It's automatic, so if I plug in my video camera, it will default to the video camera, which is cool. But when I turn it off, it defaults back to my computer. I kind of wish sometimes I could just turn it off without having to unplug everything. All in all, this is a really great monitor, and I think I would recommend it to anyone who's after a 1080p monitor. I'm really, really impressed. And having the comparison directly from my 4K screen, I kind of like the way that this looks. This is something about the image that I really dig. Thanks for watching, my name's Shane. If this video was helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If not, please give it a thumbs down. If you have any comments or questions, leave them below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And check back for more videos coming up soon. Cheers.